Hey everyone, glad you're tuning in for a morning message from the Center for Political Innovation. I'm your ideological leader, Caleb Maupin, and I just thought I would share a story that I, I heard years ago, but I heard it from the source. Uh, I guess I'll just tell you how I heard this, I'll just tell you what happened. So one time, a long time ago, five or six years ago, maybe 10, more like 10 years ago, I was sitting in a restaurant with a friend and we were talking about politics. And, uh, you know, I have a tendency to speak pretty loud, so other people heard us in the restaurant. And this old man with a cane just hunched over to the table where me and my friend were sitting. And this old man came over to the table and he said, are you guys communists? And he said it with this kind of like naughty look on his face. And we said, yeah, we're communists. And the old man said, with a with the look on his eyes, like, you know, like a mysterious look in his eyes, he said, my father was a Trotskyist. And when he said Trotskyist, his voice got really, really quiet. We all thought, this is a crazy, crazy old man. Like, what is going on? What in the world is going on here? This crazy old man is talking to our table. My father was a Trotskyist. It was, it was very bizarre. So uh, the man started telling us his story. Um, and I guess this, this old man uh, said that his father had been a Republican and he'd grown up in a conservative family, kind of a typical conservative family. Uh, and, you know, they were, they lived in New York City, you know, upper middle class Jewish folks. Uh, and, uh, you know, he'd always just known of his father as a conservative. Uh, and then one day uh, he and some of his friends, because they were young and it was the 1960s, they went to an anti-war protest. And at the anti-war protest, uh, they bought a communist newspaper. And so they came home from the protest and they were at the house and the father saw the newspaper and he looked at the newspaper and he picked up the newspaper um, and he just started crying. And he just started crying in, in the living room. Uh, and they were like shocked, like why is our father crying. I mean, is he that offended that we bought a communist newspaper? Uh, is he going to like disavow us or whatever? And then in the living room, their father started telling them about before World War II in the 1930s when he had been a Trotskyite communist uh, and he'd gone to city college. And he spoke with a glow in his eyes about how those were the best years of his life, uh, the years when he had joined workers on the picket line, the years when he'd studied Marx and Lenin, the years when he had worked very, very hard to build a socialist organization. Uh, those had been the greatest years of his life. And that after World War II and, and so much had changed and his political views had changed and obviously, but the reason that that newspaper had caused him to start crying was because he had so many memories of selling a newspaper that looked kind of like this newspaper on the streets of New York City when he had ideals, when he had principles, when he had something to really believe in in his life. Um, and the old man told us this story, and I found that to be a very, very moving testimony from this kind of lonely old man about his own father and how his own father, who'd abandoned communism uh, and become a, you know, just kind of a stodgy conservative, how his own father had such a glowing memory of the time when he had been a communist. Um, and that reminds me so much of, um, you know, there's, a, there's an expression that is used in some communist circles, which I think we ought to bring back, which is they say that when you stop being a communist, right, uh, you're only living biologically, meaning that you're alive, but you're not really alive because you're not living for a greater purpose. You're not part of the movement you know you should be part of. So if you're, if you're, you know, if you're no longer being a revolutionary, you've gone back to living biologically. And I think about the times in my life where I've had to step away and we all have to step away, right? But I know what it's like because you're not really alive. If you're not part of a movement, you don't have comrades, you don't have principles, you don't have goals you're trying to work for, you're not actively trying to change the world, you're not really alive. And sometimes, you know, you gotta step away and you gotta take care of business. And no one should be shamed for that. Doesn't mean you're a bad person, but it's true, you're not really alive. And if you really are meant to live this way, and if you really are somebody who gets it, if you really get it, you're not just along for the ride, like you really get it, uh, not living this way and going back to living biologically is a painful existence um, because you know you know what it means to be a revolutionary. You know what it means to have purpose in your life. And I think that 
uh, that that moment that was described to me where this this old uh, this old man uh, described how his father uh, had had just burst into tears seeing the newspaper he remembered what it was like so don't give it up don't give up this life don't give up what it means to be a revolutionary it's hard and we have to support each other we have to be patient with each other but don't give it up this life this way of being is very very special and we're all very very lucky uh, to be chosen to have this lifestyle and this way of being because at the end of the day we are on the right side of history and uh, the world is going to move in a much better direction because of the work of thousands and thousands and thousands of people just like us so that's what i wanted you to think about for this morning uh, have a lovely day comrades